the five important points to note in fever in a diabetic patient. Fever is very common. Fever can be debilitating. Fever carries lot of morbidity. Fever can result in mortality. It can be unpredictable and many old people may not have fever but still have lot of infections. This point is often missed by many people that is the thermoregulation, temperature regulation mechanism in many old people and especially in chronic diabetes is lost and many diabetics may have infections in the body without getting any fever. And this leads to a lot of neglect of the patient. Patient remains at home with infection and reaches the hospital or a doctor when it is very late. Fever and infections can be unusual type of infections in a diabetic also. What are the types of infection or fever? The infections can be because of bacteria virus, protozoa or parasite. Viral infections are respiratory infection or common cold and cough that you often face. Dengue fever is also a viral fever. Bacterial infection like typhoid and certain gastroenteritis. Protozoal fever, malaria is an example of protozoal fever and parasitic infection generally occurring in our intestines. What are the unique features in a diabetic? Diabetes can develop more infection because they have lowered immunity. Because the blood sugar is high in the blood, the bacteria also requires blood sugar for its multiplication and growth. In presence of high blood sugar, the bacteria multiplies at an exponential rate and this results in a, a mild infection going on to become very severe in a matter of a few hours or two to three days. Secondly, when the diabetic develops an infection, the blood sugar tends to fluctuate very widely. This is because infection results in an insulin resistant state. And that is why whatever little insulin is left in the body fails to work and this results in the blood sugar becoming very high. However, at the same time, the appetite may be lost and the patient may eat very less. So the blood sugar can go down also. Hence, when the diabetic develops infection or fever, the blood sugars become unpredictable. It can become very low to very high. These wide fluctuations in blood sugar complicates the infection. Hence, it is important that a good control of blood sugar should be achieved. So what should you do when you develop a fever and you are a diabetic? First and foremost, without too much of delay, you should visit your doctor. Secondly, Repeated blood sugar checking is important if there is infection. Thirdly, diagnosis of the infection is mandatory and prompt treatment of infection should be initiated. Your diabetologist should adjust the oral diabetic agent's doses as needed depending upon your fluctuations in blood sugar. If the blood sugar is going too high, insulin may have to be added. So the five points to remember in case of a fever in diabetic are remember first that infections are more common in diabetic than in a non-diabetic. Secondly, blood sugar can fluctuate very widely. Hence, visit your doctor as soon as possible and the infections will also spread much faster than in a non-diabetic. Third, if you have been checking your blood sugar with your glucometer once a week and you develop fever, it is important that you do repeated blood sugar checking 
sometimes daily or even two or three times a day depending upon the severity of your infection. Fourth, oral drugs should be adjusted and if needed, insulin should be added especially if the infection is severe or you have a chronic diabetes or you are already insulin dependent. Fifth, correct and prompt diagnosis of the infection and prompt therapy of the infection is needed. Thus, by attacking the infection as well as the blood sugar, both with equal vigor, the infections can be brought under control. Remember, most diabetics develop complication because infections may not manifest as fever and this leads to neglect of the infection and the infection can really progress and cause lot of complications.